The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> yes. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. you like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is... Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> Well, the holiday season is over, and there's sort of a letdown feeling in the Gildersleeve household this Sunday afternoon. The Christmas tree has been stripped of its finery and tossed in the trash pile. The greeting cards have been thrown in the wastebasket. And the great Gildersleeve has just plunked himself down on the sofa. Uh-oh, too late. What's the matter, Bertie? I was going to ask you something, but it's too late. You're settled. Oh, what was it? I was going to ask you to clean the snow off the front walk. You're right, it's too late. It's piled up pretty high out there. Yes, Bertie, bad situation. People have to get by, you know. That's right. We can't just leave it there. Something's got to be done about it. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll speak to Leroy about it. Lee? He ain't here, Mr. Gilsey. Huh? He's out playing somewhere. He's never here when you want him. Uncle Mort. Huh? Aren't you going to clean the snow off the front walk? We have the matter under serious discussion, Marjorie. Guess that's Leroy. Good. He's just in time. Leroy. Yeah? Hi. Leroy, my little man. Huh? Leroy, my boy, I... Say, Uncle, aren't you going to shovel the snow off the walk? Well... Everybody else has around here. Leroy, I thought maybe you'd take care of that. Me? Certainly. Good exercise for a growing boy. Besides, shoveling snow is lots of fun. Not for me, it isn't. Leroy, I thought just this once you might want to help out your old uncle. I thought you'd realize he works hard all week, and he's entitled to one day of rest. But since you don't, I guess your poor old uncle will have to go out and shovel that snow. Yeah, I guess he will. No, I won't. You will. Put on. You heard me, Leroy. Oh, for Get a move on, young man, right now. Unless you want your allowance cut. All right. The snow shovel's in the hall closet. All right. And I want you to do a good job, young man. Okay. So I'll have to get up and supervise this. Just sit over here by the window where I can keep an eye on him. Hey, who's that? Who, Unky? On the porch over at the Bullards. Well, you ought to recognize her. What? You gave her quite a rush when she was here before. It's Mrs. Bullard's cousin. Ann Tuttle? Well, is she back in town? Yes. Looks just as cute as ever, too. Here we go again. <laughs> Leroy! I'm going, Unc. I had to get the shovel. Just a minute, my boy. Leroy, I'll shovel that snow. Huh? You just said you wanted me to do it. Wouldn't think of it. Too strenuous for a growing boy like you. <laughs> Hope she's still out there. What'd you say, Unc? Uh, nothing. Uh, see you later, Leroy. Boy, what a character. She went back in the house. Well, <laughs> uh, maybe she'll come out again. As long as I'm out here, I might as well shovel some snow. <laughs> This is silly. She probably won't come out again. Might as well go back in the house. Let Leroy finish this. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Miss Tuttle. 
Well, I didn't know you were back in Summerfield. Yes, I'm visiting here a few days. Well, what a surprise. It's nice to see you again, Miss Tuttle. It's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. <laughs> Have you seen my little nephew anywhere? Uh, little Craig? No, I haven't. I've been busy shoveling snow. Oh, you must be tired. No, do it all the time. <laughs> Wonderful exercise. Oh? Mm-hmm. Keeps my cheeks nice and rosy. <laughs> well, I, I think I'd better find Craig. Uh, Miss Tuttle. Yes? Uh, did you have a nice Christmas? Yes, I did. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, how about New Year's? I enjoyed that, too. Nice holiday, New Year's. Of course, the 4th of July is nice, too. Then there's... Columbus Day and uh, May Day. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I really must be going. Uh, Miss Tuttle, uh, I was wondering if you and me, that is, you and I, well, maybe we could... Uh, well, well, well. Hooker. Greetings and salutations, Miss Tuttle. Hello, Judge Hooker. Nice to see you again, my dear. Our fair city has been dark and desolate without the warmth of your charming presence, without the sunshine of your smile. Oh, brother. <laughs> Shoveling snow, Gildy. What does it look like I'm doing? What's the matter? Couldn't you get Leroy to do it? This old goat. You'll pardon my boldness, Miss Tuttle, but you're looking prettier than ever. Well, thank you, Judge. Not at all. Uh, <clears throat> did you have a nice Christmas? Yes, I did. That's nice. And how about... Yes, the... Judge. You had a nice New Year's, too. <laughs> Why don't you go in the house, Horace, and sit by the fire or something? I'm quite comfortable out here, thank you. You might catch cold. Oh, no, I find this air quite bracing. Uh, you better go in, Horace. You're turning blue. Don't you worry about me, Gildy. You know, Miss Tuttle, winter always takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, second childhood. <laughs> Snow fights, bobsledding, those were merry times. <laughs> well, I have a good notion to make a snowman right now. I'll make one of you, Gildy, if I can find enough snow. What? <laughs> Why, you skinny bag oh, of... Oh, there he is. Craig! Craig! Miss Tuttle. Well, gentlemen, I have to be going. But, Miss Tuttle. It was nice seeing you again. But, Miss Tuttle, I wanted Goodbye, to... Goodbye, my dear. You know, Gildy, it is getting a little chilly. I think I'll accept your invitation to go into the fire. Huh? Too bad you have to stay out here and shovel snow all by yourself. See you later, Gildy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Miss Tuttle, or may I call you Anne? You'll make me the happiest man in the world if you'll have dinner with me and my little family tomorrow night. This is all I ask, for I dare not ask a kiss. I dare not beg a smile, lest having that or this, I might grow proud the while. <laughs> Yours truly, Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, Esquire. <laughs> Pretty good note. Glad Marjorie had that poetry book around. Uh, Leroy. Yeah? Come here, my boy. What do you want, Unc? I want you to do something for me. Oh, I'm kind of busy, Unc. Never mind. I want you to take this note over and give it to Miss Tuttle, personally. A note? Well, gee, Unc, she's just across the street. Can't you go over and see her? I prefer to do it this way, young man. Just take this note now. Oh, I get it. Mushy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> No remarks are necessary. As a matter of fact, it's a formal invitation. Well, sort of formal. Here you are. Okay. Run along now. And don't you lose it. Let's see. I'll run down and get some flowers. Candy. Leroy, what are you waiting for? Uh, here's a quarter. Now hurry. Okay. Here goes your little messenger of love. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Good afternoon, TV. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> My, that's a nice bouquet of flowers you have there. Yes. <laughs> Bet you're wondering who they're for. No, not particularly. <laughs> what? Uh, is there something I can do for you, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, I do want a box of candy. That heart-shaped one up there. Heart-shaped box? Very well. 
Peavy, aren't you a little curious? Okay. Flowers and a box of candy. What does that sound like? Sounds like flowers and a box of candy. <laughs> but don't you want to know who they're for? No, I never ask personal questions of my customers. That's the pharmaceutical code. Oh? Uh, well, maybe I'll tell you then. Do you want me to? Yeah, if you want to. You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Well, if you'd like to tell me. Oh! For heaven's sake, they're for Mrs. Bullard's cousin, Ann Tuttle. She's back in town. Yes, I know. I'm expecting to have dinner with her tomorrow night. Yes, I know that, too. What? Well, how do you know that? Well, Leroy was in a little while ago. Bought a quarter's worth of candy. He left a note on the candy counter. <laughs> Didn't he deliver that note? If you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Gildersleeve, it was a lovely sentiment you wrote. I dare not ask a kiss. I dare... Peavy, not... give me that note. I haven't got it. Well, where is it? Well, you don't have to worry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Miss Tuttle got the note all right. How could she? Well, you see, she ordered some toothpaste this afternoon, so when I sent it over, I wrapped your note around it. What? <laughs> you sent my note with toothpaste? It's very good toothpaste. Peavy, why don't you mind your own business? Mr. Gildersleeve, I was only trying to A fine to friend you are. Toothpaste. What does she think? She'll never speak to me again. Well, I don't think... Peavy, do you know what you are? You... If you can hold it for just a minute while I answer the phone. Peavy's pharmacy. Who? Oh, just a moment, please. It's for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Huh? Hello? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, Miss Tuttle. I was hoping I'd find you there. I just got your note. Oh. Well, you see... It was so clever the way you sent it. It was? Yes, so original. How did you ever think of it? Well, I and just... And Mr. Gildersleeve, I'd love to have dinner at your house tomorrow night. Oh, that's wonderful. About seven? That'll be fine. And uh, after dinner, maybe we can go someplace? Uh, just we two? All right. Well, see you tomorrow night, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Peavy? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve? As I was about to say, do you know what you are? What? You're a little Cupid. Well, now, I wouldn't say that. Back to the great Gildersleeve and his romance in just a minute. You know, I stopped in to see Floyd Munson the other day, and as I entered his barber shop, he greeted me with... Hi, Mr. Ward. Shave and haircut? Yeah, that's right, Floyd. You know, today I'm going to give you a tip. No kidding. Now I can buy that yacht I've been wanting. Well, here's the tip, Floyd. Tell your wife that parquet margarine, the craft quality margarine, actually costs less now than it did a year ago. Well, that ain't the tip I'd planned on, but it's a good one just the same. Well, your wife will like it. Uh -huh. She'll like parquet, too. It's one of America's favorite spreads for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Why, parquet... Hold is... it, hold it, pal. You're talking to the head of a family that's been using parquet for years. Lovey swears by it. Both of us like the flavor of parquet. Well, naturally. Parquet's fine, fresh flavor makes it a national favorite. Nothing but the most carefully selected products of American farms go into parquet. Sure. And there's 15,000 units of vitamin A in every pound. <laughs> you don't have to sell me, chum. Old Floyd, he knows how good it is. Right. And friends, that's knowledge that Floyd Munson shares with the millions of women all over America who serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. <laughs> It's approaching the dinner hour in the Gildersleeve household, but this is no ordinary dinner tonight. The dining room table has the new look with its lace tablecloth, gleaming silverware, and bowl of flowers in the center. And coming down the stairs, the great Gildersleeve has the new look, too. Give me one dozen roses, put my heart in beside them. Oh, Marge. Oh, hello, Margie, my dear. My, a tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> How do I look? Oh, shirt. 
popped out. <laughs> have to just stuff it back in. Unky. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with dressing for dinner. Yes, Unky, but don't you think you're overdoing it a little? No, I don't. I'm sure Miss Tuttle will appreciate it. Over at the Bullards, they probably dress for dinner every night. It's the usual thing in polite society, you know. Oh, yes, of course. Hi. Ah, hello, Leroy. When do we... <whistles> Pretty neat, Unk. Yeah, thank you, my boy. Looks a little tight, though. Can you bend over? What? <laughs> of course I can bend. <clears throat> well, well, uh, I wonder how Bertie's coming with the dinner. I wouldn't bother her, Unk. She's awfully busy out there. Yeah, she chased me out of the kitchen twice. It serves you right. I told you not to annoy her. Bertie! Unky! Just a minute. What is it, Mr. Gilsey? I've got a lot of things on the fire out there. Yeah, just checking up. Dinner will be ready at seven sharp, huh, Bertie? Yes, sir. That's good. And you won't forget to serve the coffee in the demi tasse cups. No, sir. That's it. And, Bertie, just for tonight, we won't shout back and forth from the kitchen. I'll press the buzzer when I want you. Yes, is that all, Miss Gilsey? Well, I guess you'll manage all right, Bertie. If certain people just let Bertie alone, she'll manage all right. If certain people just let her alone. Boy, she's mad. Well, I don't blame her. Unky, stop making such a fuss about everything. Just because Miss Tuttle is coming for dinner. Yeah, Unk, relax. Well, I just want to make sure that everything goes right, that's all. And children, I think before Miss Tuttle arrives, we'd better have a little rehearsal. What? We want to show her that we know what to do at the dinner table. I know what to do. You eat. Yep. <laughs> but it's the way we eat, Leroy. Now, we'll pretend that we're just going into dinner. Leroy, you take Marjorie's arm. This is silly. Never mind. I'll take Miss Tuttle's arm. Miss Tuttle? We're pretending, Leroy. Play acting. Now, we go in. After you, Miss Tuttle. After you, Marjorie. Oh, for... Now, we sit down at the table. Get up, Leroy. We seat the ladies first. Uh... Miss Tuttle, you sit here by me. Okay, we got the idea. Just a minute. We're not through. Before the first course, we'll have a little polite conversation. If this isn't ridiculous. Like this. Did you have a nice day, Miss Tuttle? Well, that's nice. Is he kidding? Leroy. <laughs> and after the conversation, we'll have the first course. I'll ring for Bertie. What is it now, Miss? What y'all sitting down now for? You said you wanted dinner at 7 o'clock. Well, we were just... Ain't no use trying to rush me, Mr. Gillsleeve. You said dinner at 7 o'clock. I'm sorry, Bertie. I didn't mean to... When you tell me 7 o'clock, it's 7 o'clock. It ain't 6. It ain't 6.30. It's 7 o'clock. But, Bertie, this was just a rehearsal. Rehearsal? Mr. Gillsleeve, I've been getting meals in this house for a long time. I don't need no rehearsal. Yeah, I know you don't, Bertie. I was Bertie's only... right. This is the craziest thing I ever heard of. As if we didn't know how to act. I didn't say that. Marjorie, where are you going? I'm going to my room. I'm not a child, and I won't be treated like one. Well, you're still a child to me. You come back here, young lady. Anybody that cooks morning, noon, and night don't need no rehearsal. Bertie, I didn't... Marjorie, come back here. Bertie, I'll have dinner in my room. Me too. You keep out of this, young man. Rehearsal. If you're dissatisfied, Mr. Gillsleeve, you just let Bertie know I get... Hey, Bertie, I'm very satisfied. Where are you going, Leroy? Sorry, Unc. Miss Tuttle asked me to take her home. She can't stand your shouting at the table. Leroy! Look out of the window again, Leroy. Do you see her? No. Uh... We'll wait for Miss Tuttle, who's probably detained a few minutes. It's getting late. Oh, haven't you heard, Leroy? It's fashionable to be late in high society. Now, my dear, we agreed to forget all about that. I'm getting awful hungry. Leroy, we'll wait for our guest. You mustn't be a slave to your stomach. Mr. Gillsleeve, it's after seven. I know, Bertie. She should be here any minute now. Okay, but you said seven o'clock. <laughs> It's 7.30. I'm starving. So am I. We'll wait just a little longer. Unc, Unc, I've got spots before my eyes. <laughs> yeah, well, it's almost 8. No use waiting any longer, children. She isn't coming. Oh, boy, food. I'll tell Bertie. Unky, why don't you call Miss Tuttle? No, I won't call her. She doesn't want to come. It's all right. But maybe something happened. No. Her old uncle... Got stood up, that's all. Poor Unky. I think it's a shame after all the trouble you went to. 
That's all right. <laughs> oh, shirt popped out. Mr. Gilfrey, dinner's on the table. Uh, thanks, Bertie. Sorry I kept you waiting so long. That's all right. You go ahead and eat with Leroy, my dear. I'm not very hungry. Well, all right. Mr. Gilfrey. Yes, Bertie? Miss, Mar- Miss Marjorie was worried that you might feel bad, and she asked me to invite one of your friends over to dinner, so I called the judge. Oh, well, that was nice. I told him you was feeling lonesome. Yeah? But he said he couldn't come. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you anyway, Bertie. Guess I'm not very popular tonight. Hey, when do we eat? Somebody's at the door. I'll get it. Miss Tuttle. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. I can't tell you how sorry I am I'm so late, but I really couldn't help you. Oh, that's all right. I was out with the bullets and the car broke down. I couldn't get to a phone. I understand. Then you're not angry? No, of course not. We didn't mind waiting. You haven't had dinner yet. No, what the heck. We weren't very hungry anyway. I'm going to starve, aren't you? Uh, Oh, (laughs) hello, Miss Tuttle. Hello, Leroy. Marjorie, I hope you'll both accept my apologies. Of course. Sure, let's eat. (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh Uh-huh. You're wearing a tuxedo. I am? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I always like to dress for dinner. Well, you look very distinguished. (laughs) Distinguished. Uncle, I'm going to faint. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, shall we go into the dining room? I'd love to. After you, Miss Tuttle. After you, Marjorie. That was a lovely dinner, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, it wasn't much. Just potluck. <laughs> Would you care for another demi tasse? No, thank you. Your niece and nephew are charming. Leroy's so well mannered. He is? I mean, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there's any place you'd care to go, a movie or dancing. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I think I'd rather stay right here. It's so cozy and nice by the fire. If that's all right with you. You bet. It's all right with me. Shall we sit here on the sofa? Nice and comfy. All right. Uh, 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 this is nice. Yes, it is. Comfortable? Mm-hmm. Does that light bother your eyes? No, I don't think so. It does. I could turn it off and just leave the lamp on. <laughs> No trouble. Well... I'll just reach over there and... Oh, my shirt. (laughs) Yeah. Now I'll get the light. Yeah. That's better, isn't it? More comfy. Mm Mm-hmm. I dare not ask a kiss. I dare not beg a smile. Huh? (laughs) Don't you remember, Mr. Gildersleeve? That was in the note you sent me yesterday. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Hope there wasn't any toothpaste on it. <laughs> it's a lovely poem by Robert Herrick. Mm-hmm. Herrick is one of my favorites. Yeah, he's one of my favorites, too. Never miss one of his poems. Do you know the rest of this one? Uh, no. <laughs> it goes like this. No, no. The utmost share of my desire shall be only to kiss that air that lately kissed thee. Uh, Miss Tuttle, you don't have to kiss the air. Not while I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve. (laughs) Who's that, I wonder? I get it. Good evening, Judge. Evening, Bertie. What does he want? Well, I didn't think you were coming over. I couldn't make it for dinner, Bertie, but I thought I'd drop by for a minute and cheer up our lonesome friend. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Hello, Gilda. Well, Miss Tuttle. Good evening, Judge. I hope I'm not intruding. (laughs) Oh, no. Mr. Gildersleeve and I were just discussing poetry. Well, in that case, I'll stay. I like nothing better than an evening with the muses. Why don't you go and spend it with them? (laughs) Oh, I didn't know you liked poetry. Oh, I do. 
Why, I can recite it for the hour. Oh, ye gods. That's wonderful. Here's a favorite of mine. Huh? <clears throat> the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, <laughs> over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded nearly napping, Suddenly there came a tapping. Probably bats. <laughs> As of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Oh, what's the use? <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. There's no reason for me to remind you ladies that food prices are high. But there is a mighty good reason for me to remind you about parquet margarine. Parquet, the margarine of craft quality, actually costs less today than it did a year ago. That's right. Delicious, wholesome parquet, a favorite spread for America's bread, is more than ever your best buy for flavor. Serve it on rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles, as well as bread. Every pound contains 15,000 units of vitamin A. Try Parquet and see for yourself why it's the favorite spread of millions. That's Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet, made by Kraft. that, Miss Tuttle? Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, kiss me again. Well, if you insist. <laughs> again? Oh, well, what the heck? <laughs> Gildy, Gildy, wake up. If it's... Gildy, what's that? Judge, where am I? You've been asleep for the last two hours, Gildy. You missed a thrilling evening. Oh, my goodness. Where's Miss Tuttle? She had to leave, but she told me to tell you she had a wonderful time. Huh? Yes, I recited every poem in my repertoire. No wonder she left. Too bad you slept through it. The one she liked especially was The Curfew Tolls the Knell of Parting Day. Good night, Judge. The lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lee. Why don't you do the same, you old goat? Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Tomorrow night, William Powell will be Al Jolson's guest on the Kraft Music Hall, heard over most of these NBC stations. Don't miss it. I will. Remember, tomorrow night. For exact time, see your local paper. And be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Do that. Ladies, here's the quickest, easiest, and most economical way to make macaroni and cheese that's downright delicious. Open a package of Kraft Dinner. Inside, you'll find a special macaroni. It cooks fluffy light in just seven minutes. Then you sprinkle on the golden Kraft grated that comes in every package of Kraft Dinner. There you have a grand main dish of macaroni and cheese, enough to serve four people. And it costs only a few cents a serving. Get several packages of Kraft Dinner from your food store tomorrow. Look for the yellow and blue package plainly marked Kraft <coughs> Dinner. <coughs>